have you seen yeah. like Kyle uses him at ball? Yeah, thank God we got him then and not after they had had him for two or three weeks. He's Listen, it's, a, it's scary to watch all the weapons they have. Uh, he, he's one piece of it, a big piece of it, right? Um, and even in that game, the first time he touched the ball, he had ran it for a seven yards, you know, run or something, almost broke it out. I mean, he's explosive, real smart football player, but he's not the only one. They're all over the place on that on this particular unit. Coach uh, Justin Reed has uh, announced that T-shirts are in a thousand. Now. <laughs> 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 uh, oh man, uh, humbling, very humbling. I'm gonna shoot him for doing that. I'm trying to burn. <laughs> I'm trying to burn every T-shirt that I can find. Uh, I don't think I'm getting them all, though. Steve, uh, last year when you played the 49ers, they also had a different quarterback. What are your coaching doing? What are you telling guys about playing against this team? Yeah, <clears throat> all they got to do is put the tape on, Adam, in my opinion. Um, we had some crossover film during the course of the year. But when you dive into it and you watch them, <clears throat> you don't, this court, it's not a quarterback that's managing or all those tabs that they put on him. This is, this, he's for real. Um, makes all the throws, really, really smart. And then what I, what I didn't know, because you know, I don't watch, I'm not seeing enough of it, is how athletic he is. I mean, this is another quarterback that <clears throat> when you cover everything back there and he finds a lane in, in a pass rush line can take off. He did it last week. He's done it in every playoff game and gets positive yards. That puts a lot of strain on us defensively. Thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with, with him. Away from it, Deion Bush is an interception. Yeah. Yeah, he did a great, he, he did exactly the way we had practiced. And now here's another guy that doesn't get a lot of reps in practice, right? Uh, I was so happy for Deion. I, I love Deion. He's been with us for a couple of years. And, you know, after <clears throat> a year ago, he was on the 53, if I, if I have it right, and played a lot of special teams. And then this year, he begins the, game, the year on the, on the practice squad. And yet, he's always out there first. Yeah, he's always rallying with the guys in the secondary. I was really happy. He played it perfectly. He had the right eyes for it. He came, he was supposed to, he helped on one side, took that away, and then made himself available. And, you know, in those moments, you know those balls that look like they're easy to catch? Those are the hard ones. And, but he caught it. But he almost, he almost made a mistake and started running out. And then he, then he remembered, and he, it was a big, 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 big play. God bless. I tell you, you don't replace that height and that length that he has. Um, but, you know, we'll get guys to step in there. Felix will probably have to step in. And, you know, everybody's got to up their game in a Super Bowl anyway. Um, hopefully, you know, like last week, I think it was decent in the first half where we didn't have to play as many plays. But if the play count gets up, that's where it gets tough for, you know, George being out there a lot and Mike. And that's when we've got to have guys to step in there. How much, uh, how much do you appreciate kind of those – those secondary rotational guys, like, you know, like Matt Dixon always stepping in. Yeah. And and yeah, Mike Pinnell. And, yeah, you know, I mean, we don't even have Derek. Dott Derek Nottie is, is, is a key to what we do inside. And losing him is a big blow. And Brian Cook's not here anymore. I mean, we've lost guys along the way. And to your point, guys have stepped in. I think that's a reflection of the coaches, the assistant coaches defensively, that do a great job with these players, even when they're not expected to play in the game, and then the players responding to it. Um, but we got a good group of guys that way, and we've needed it. I mean, we've gone through the season where we've lost guys here and there. Drew was out again. Nick, Nick's been out. Drew steps up, and I think they like rallying around each other. Who knows what's going to happen in this game where we may need somebody to do the same thing. Are you surprised that you haven't lost a few assistants along the way just with how? Yeah, very surprised. I mean, all these guys are deserving of being coordinators, and there will be some eventual head coaches in this group. Um, but, you know, everybody has their reasons for tabbing guys from wherever, but hopefully, God willing, these guys will get their opportunity to. Appreciation level for just getting to this point. You've, you've gotten yeah. to this point as a coach more than most guys who've been in this business with a few different organizations. What's, what's it mean? Yeah, you know, uh, I don't know, somewhere in the off season or in the past here, we've been talking, I was having a conversation. I think it's a, a huge ac accomplishment to win a conference championship, and yet, we all know that when you go to this game, somebody loses, and then, and then you know, what they call it, the loser. I don't, I don't feel that way. It's harder to win. It's almost harder to win a conference championship than it is to win a one-game, you know, Super Bowl. So I value it, and to get to this point, I think, is an extreme accomplishment, you know, and, and, and when you think that way, you think about all the people that you did it with, you know, the coaches, the players, and all the, all the staff around it. I just think it's a, 
it's a great way to celebrate a lot of work. This began, I think, July 17th. You know, it's February 2nd. It's a long grind. Uh, but to a, to a man and a woman, all the people that we got working here, they've done a tremendous job. Steve, how much, Steve, how much does Mike Edwards' ability unlock just from reading? I know you guys think that. Yeah. Mike has a huge <clears throat> play in that and because he's one of those cerebral guys that I keep talking about. And again, and again we've, I think we've mentioned this before. You know, Mike came new here. It's been one year in the system. It's not always easy to do, but it tells you a lot about him mentally. Uh, and he's a natural football player. He'll, he'll see things out there and get a feel. Might not be exactly the way we worked on it in practice, but he finds a way to make a play because he's just a natural football player. That's big. You mentioned Felix a minute ago. Yep. What's his readiness to... Yeah, I mean, we feel real confident with where Felix is. I mean, I I, th I know that we've talked about this, like, let's, let's say we were back in September, October, and I know the questions have come at times where we're rotating guys. You know, we've rotated linebackers, we've rotated D-line, we've, we've rotated corners with Josh and Jalen. And I know that I, I'm pretty sure I said at the time that part of the reason we do it is to be ready later when guys have to step in. And Felix is a pretty good example. Like, he would get some plays here and there. I mean, again, I've said this before, it wasn't a reflection on what Felix wasn't do, or not doing, but the other guys were playing pretty good. And then Charles came. And, uh, but now, hopefully, the fact that Felix has played some in games, that he'll be able to step in there and perform pretty well for us. Okay? Thanks. Thank you.